هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos anesti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karis amenos. Christos anesti, Messiah come, and Christ is risen. Uh, it's time for our next segment of the BTS vlog. Yeah, the Big Bang Clear Girls BTS vlog. It is 23 hours and 47 minutes, uh, no, 42 minutes. Into the day of Tuesday, May 17th, uh, 2016. Yeah, 23 hours and 42 minutes. Uh, almost midnight. Almost the next day out. Um, we're staying pretty much current. Uh, the uh, 16th and 17th uh, 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 for earlier this, earlier today. Uh, the, that vlog is in the editing bay right now. Uh, and should be uh, ready to go up tomorrow. Uh, today's, uh, vlog, which was, uh, that went up, uh, today, as, was, uh, as, for the date I'm talking about, um, uh, I sent, I, I put up, uh, the 14th and 15th, uh, of May's vlog. So, we're on schedule, things are going well, uh, let me get my keyboard and do multiple things at the same time here, I gotta uh, sort of set up the, the, uh, the video, get, sort of get the clips in order. Uh, I'm having good discussions. I think I think things are going well. Sometimes it's not um, not an awful lot to talk about. It's just sort of the mundane stuff that's going on. Uh, that does happen. Uh, oh, a lot actually. <laughs> uh, I'm still working on the notebook. That's what's sort of delaying a lot of things. Is the no the work on the notebook is. is has taken me a lot longer than I expected it to do. Uh, and so it's going to hold things up for a bit. But I should f finish the, n the notebook work uh, either tonight or tomorrow. And that will sort of allow me to sort of uh, do a lot more than uh, I have been doing. Uh, and I'm still sort of dealing in terms of uh, scheduling the work. I'm sort of dealing with uh, fatigue issues. Uh, well, still dealing with fatigue issues. Not that I'm dealing with them, but, but still dealing with them. As you can, as you can tell, there's not really uh, there are no real vacations here. There's, there's also and also there's no real vac uh, uh, weekends. It's sort of one continuous uh, uh, day in day out, uh, night in night out type of uh, thing where there's not a lot of rest in between. So that does take its toll. There's a there's sort of a cost to that, uh, physically, mentally, or whatever. However, we want to sort of view it, and that kind of uh, impacts what I have to say and what I don't have to say. <laughs> length of our length of our clip. So this is the first clip of the uh, of uh, of of uh, the next day. I've got three more clips left to go uh, before. We're all done, but uh, the editing is. I just put the clips in the editor. See, with, with the way I do the, the numbering and everything like that, the way I do the date, time, and date stamp for everything, and I have the bins for everything. It's rather easy to put these videos together. So now it goes. It's episode forty-six. Goes into the uh, system for rendering, and there we go. We're off. We're off to the races. It's gonna render. It's gonna take. Between uh, about four, four and a half hours to finish. So it won't be done, that won't be done and ready to uh, sort of be, uh, have the description filled. Yeah. Have the description sort of adjusted to this, uh, put the title in, move it over to the upload bay, uh, and that will sort of will happen here. So uh, I have. I said I'll work on finishing the notebook tonight. I have a couple other things stuff to do. I have to do some work on 
Uh, one of my research projects that I do up north, uh, the expeditions. I have to work on that tonight as well. Uh, and I gotta do some more prep work on uh, the uh, second part of the the or the sort of the second segment of the network that connects to the internet that provides web pages and so on and so forth. That has a lot of upgrading that needs to be done. I need to start doing that work today. So I'm going to move that into schedule. Uh, and uh, we'll see how much time I have to get everything done in. So, and I also have to eat. I have to remember to eat. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do now is when I have something to eat. I went out early, earlier for, uh, around 6 o'clock to my parents' house and had something to eat there. So I had some t- t- dinner there. But uh, I'm now I'm hungry again. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's B- Big Bang Theory Rails BTS vlog. I'll see you then. Alrighty, yeah, time for another segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Rails BTS vlog. So, you saw so nasty, Masiha, Masih, Masihaam. Uh, Christ has risen. So let me give you a time and date stamp to start off with. It is 6 hours and 29 minutes into the day of Wednesday, May 18th, 2016. Yeah, the... <coughs> just got an email message that uh, from the shipper that uh, the monitor should arrive today. So uh, it should be here around noon, so I'm going to stay up for the rest of the day. Uh, I'm not going to go to bed till afternoon. Uh, I was supposed to go food shopping today, but because the uh, monitor is actually arriving, I'm going to hold off on that until uh, until the monitor actually gets here. Then, uh, well, I'm not going to go food shopping because I'll be too tired at that point in time because I'm not going to go to bed at all. Uh, I should be going to bed now. It's like 12 hours, so I should be finishing the day, but I decided not to do that. I want to sort of see what's what's happening here. Now, initially, the monitor is going to go in the uh, front room, but uh, I expect uh, that within a month or so, so that I'll switch the monitor from the front room to back here, and uh, <coughs> deal with it from there on out. Yeah, uh, I've been doing a fair bit of re- uh, work on my on my on my, on my uh, notebook, and it was more or less done. So I've now started taking uh, uh, some notes. One of the things I was working on is on the plague, and yeah, the funnel thing about the plague. Uh, and the bizarre thing is, is that uh, going through some of the articles, uh, noticing that. Uh, <coughs> one, of our, one of the articles that talks about the plague uh, was in The Guardian in 2014. When we go back over it again, I went back over to sort of source the information on there. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of uh, missing and sketching. Like it says there, there, there's, uh, there, there was two uh, research teams working on this thing. One went, went to the Crossrail research team, which was not associated with... Uh, one of the doctors has made the prog- uh, prognosis that uh, it was more than uh, than simply the black death, more than simply the flea bites that sort of uh, caused the wild spread. Well, rather, it became pneumonia. Then when it became a pneumonia, it was the infection went from initially from the rat to the human, but from the human, it became airborne as part of a, uh, as part of a pneumonia. And this is where you kind of end up getting. Uh, <coughs> sort of a combination of uh, the different diseases. And that's what killed a lot of the people here. But the thing is, they don't really they don't really specify this too much until you get near the end of the article. Then you have to go find out who this or sort of doctor is here. Let me see, where, where did I put it now here? Uh. <coughs> 
Yeah, but the the, guy, the guys uh, and this is, they, they give very very uh, it's at the bottom. It says this article was amended on April third, uh, <coughs> two thousand fourteen, to make <coughs> to make it clear that <coughs> that the mnemonic theory of <coughs> Black Death spread is Doctor Tim. Brooks own uh, as shown in the Channel Four documentary. Uh, okay, he is not associated with the uh, Crossrail Research uh, team, I guess. So, they don't go on and tell you who uh, Dr. Tim Brooks is. So, go out and find him. Do a background research. Find out he's actually uh, quite a noted scientist in terms of uh, in his research in virology. So it's not that he, this guy is simply out of nowhere. This guy's got, you know, a, a good amount of research under his belt. But they don't tell you who the, they don't tell you who the uh, Crossrail research team is. And you really can't find who they are the uh, Crossrail Research, the, the sort of the Crossrail Research team, who did the actual work. I mean, uh, and this, this is the problem: is you, you you think that you would have something more significant, but the <coughs> the reality is you don't. I mean, this is this is This is a problem when you know you're looking at a research article, something that's based on research, as opposed to be oh scientific, but the details just simply aren't there. So you go to the site that give you for the Crossrail research, right? Victims in the Black Death. This is. Uh, radiocarbon dating and uh, ancient DNA evidence uh, show the, the London burial ground uh, used for the plague uh, for, for plague victims for at least a hundred years. <coughs> New geophysical techniques have lo located evidence of more uh, charter houses, charter house burials. Channel Four is a a, uh, a, a secret hist uh, Channel Four is a, a secret hist a secret history uh, strands to explore the uh, London's Black Death plague. Uh, new new research on the skeleton found uh, <coughs> during uh, construction of Europe's largest con construction project in London in uh, in London. Uh, reveals that m uh, many died of the plague during the 14th century. Uh, the 14th century Black, de Black Death uh, pandemic. While others died during later plagues. Okay, so it goes through here. Again, they're still not telling you who the researchers are. I'll give you more history on the on the, on the black plague and the in the site they're esca excavating. <clears throat> Tell you more about the site. There's uh, from the teeth scientists have been able have, have found uh, traces of DNA of uh, the bacterium responsible for the black death. Well, again, nothing about who the scientists particularly are. Just scientists, it's sort of an empty. Um, and they don't, they, they don't give you much of anything in terms of... Uh, it's just near the end here, they give you uh, the lead archaeologist, uh, uh, Jay Carver, who says he's leading the team here, so... I'm going to have to go investigate who this guy is. 
uh, and then go from there to sort of figure out uh, what they said and what they didn't say. <laughs> and it is what happens is that it, it, you would expect uh, more information to be, you know, the, the, who the people are, but that's not what happens is in, in a lot of the articles. It, one of the articles I found in Guardian that sort of talks about uh, these various different, uh, uh, how should I put it? There's various different views on things. And here's on particularly on science things. And they have in, in the in the uh, Guardian newspaper they have on their website. Uh, one of the articles I came across that was sort of in the same page that was advertising the same page as uh, 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 the uh, uh, the history about the death, Black Death. How to write a science news story based on a research paper. Well, that's basically what I was looking at. So the William, the William, uh, the William, uh, no, no, well, the welcome, that's uh, W-E-L-L, W-E-L-L-C-O-M-E, -L -L -E, I guess is a person name, uh, Trust Science uh, Writing Prize, this is 2014, in association with The Guardian and The Observer, is open for entries in uh, in parallel with uh, the competition. We are uh, publishing a series of weekly how-to guides for the budding science, uh, science journalists. And the one point there, like most of the points were pretty good about what they should be looking for and what they should be looking for. But here's the problem with the thing, because it's the first one, the first and most important one, this is what most people see. Find a good paper. Thousands of scientific papers are published each week. Uh, the majority of the majority will not make good for good for news good good news stories. Look for uh, look for work that is entertaining, fascinating, important, or controversial. Ask yourself: Will will anyone care? Be brutal about this. Move on if it if the answer is no. So if the information if if the as a researcher I know information is important. Going through uh, lectures for the average person is boring. They would rather be doing other things. But I like the, I like going through research. I like doing going through lectures. I like taking my notes and stuff like that. I just, things I enjoy. But if I use that as a guideline, find something entertaining. Well, hard data and the analysis of whether something is right or wrong, or or the analysis on some, just the analysis on something. You, you got something. You're not you're not simply specifically answering the question: is, is this right or is this wrong? You're simply taking your notes on. You're being objective. You're not sort of uh, prejudging things. <clears throat> For a lot of people, that's boring. It's not entertaining, so more often than not, they pass over the stuff, and that's why you see there's not there, when you read a, a, a sort of science uh, new, science news or science journalism based on, on on a research report, a large chunk of the information is missing. So <coughs> that's, almost, that's not the one thing that's not done here. We don't simply gloss over. Sorry about this. <coughs> we don't simply gloss over the important information. And that's it. It doesn't matter who has put the article out. You sit down. You take your notes. You, uh, in terms of the lecture, or in terms of a, or a lecture or a documentary, sit down, take your notes, and then afterwards, after you've taken a couple notes from from a variety of different other sources on the tape, same topic. Then you start looking at your notes, you compare your notes, and you do the analysis based like based on that. You do not go in there with your own sense of, okay, I'm right and everybody else is wrong, 
and to determine what is right and what is wrong. And that's not how you approach objective research. Because there are a lot of things out there, there are a lot of information out there that if you simply say, oh, this is wrong, and simply dismiss it, there may be information in there, even if you are right, right? Let's assume that take, let's take the assumption that you're right about something. If you want to further understand the, the issue that you're working on, because you never reach, reach the full explanation of things, there's always more to be looked at. <coughs> if you dismiss something, you may be dismissing something that has a key to some, to, to, that will lead you to a better understanding of something more important down the line. So you can't afford to simply be dismissive of something because it's not entertaining or doesn't have, you know, the controversial appeal of, of a, 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 a popular science story. You have to go beyond. You have to sort of take that step further. And, and that's where this channel is different. We're not simply presenting a entertainment view of science and research the way you would have if you were watching PBS or Discovery Channel. And that's why I'm saying this channel goes beyond PBS and Discovery because we're not simply giving you an entertainment piece. We're not simply showing you entertainment. This is real science. This is real research. And it's not always exciting. It's not always, you know, flashy fiber graphics and and, and amazing uh, recreations of, of something that supposedly happened in history. That, you know, I mean, that's what a lot of documentaries do. They spend an enormous amount of time doing recreation, uh, recreations of the uh, of that particular period and convince you that, the, that their idea of what happened is what the reality is. And that's not necessarily the case. Uh, they're simply recreating it the way they think it should be recreated. So, anyways, I'm going to leave this here for now. Uh... <coughs> I think there's another, uh, let's see, it's almost 7 o'clock now. So, I think there's another uh, 4 or 5 hours left before the uh, uh, the monitor shows up. So, <coughs> bit by bit I'll work on this. Oh, anyways, I'll leave that here for now, and I will see you in the uh, next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory, all BTS vlog. Alright, take it easy. Well, the day is finally ending for me. Uh, let me give you a time and date stamp to so you know when my day is ending. It is 13 hours and 32 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday, May 18th, 2016. Uh, yeah, the monitor finally came in, but... Uh, mm, I'm not going to do any work on it now. I'm going to leave it till tomorrow and work on it then. Uh, the day went pretty good, pretty pretty well. Um, I got a lot of work done on the notebook. Actually, I'm actually working in the notebook now. The new no, the new book, notebook is functional. Uh, I've already sort of been using it to uh, organize uh, some of the ad hoc notes that just came in today. Uh, looking at um, views on, on views on on, on scientific research, uh, how journalists recommend that you write a, uh, <coughs> a an article <coughs> <coughs> on a scientific research paper. Um, one of the problems I have with it is that uh, beyond the entertaining factor, and that's the thing is they they, pl they place the primary function of uh, uh, science in the news, science and media, like on Discovery Channel and PBS, is now about the entertaining factor. So the show needs to be enter entertain the article needs to be entertaining and the unfortunate thing is, is that science is, is is not always so-called entertaining it's, it's entertaining to the scientist uh, for myself I find it entertaining but the thing is I do like reading I do like studying 
I, I am pretty much of a nerd. And unless you're along that, those lines, then um, the long hours isn't going to be for you. And the thing is, there's unfortunately, there's, uh, uh, there's no real uh, 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 shortcut to this. You have to do the long hours. I mean, there's, there's no way around. No, I don't know of any way around this other than doing the long hours to take the notes to go through your notes and really produce something significant. And sometimes things do take, you know, not only <coughs> days, but weeks, months, and years before the notes finally come together and have give you something significant. And that's certainly the case the case here is that it's it's not a fast paced uh, an environment where we're always launching rockets. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to leave that here for now. It's been a very long day. I got up around uh, 5.30 yesterday. So, 5.30, uh, let's say 5.30 to 5.30, that's uh, 12 hours. Uh, 5.30 till just about now, till uh, 13.30. Uh, that's another, uh, let's see, 5.30 to 12.30 is uh, 7 hours, uh, plus another hour, that's 8 hours, so 8 hours plus 12 hours. Uh, I just put through a, uh, I just put in a uh, 20 hour day. So, uh, needless to say, I'm pretty much wiped out. <coughs> <coughs> so I will see you in the next segment <coughs> of Big Bang Theory Rails, BTS vlog. And I guess it goes without saying given these conditions that I will not be going food shopping today. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.